In this video, we are going to introduce Lenz's law. While the focus of Faraday's law is on the magnitude of the EMF induced, the focus of Lenz's law is about the polarity of the EMF induced. So what does Lenz's law state? It states that the polarity of the induced EMF is such that it tends to produce a current that creates a magnetic field so as to oppose the change in magnetic flux. This statement seems simple, but there are a few points to note about it before we go looking at how to apply Lenz's law to finding the polarity of the EMF. Number one, although current is mentioned in Lenz's law, there is only an induced current if the conductor is, connect is connected in a closed circuit. The induced EMF is actually the more basic quantity. It is always present, even when the conductor is not in a complete circuit. Hence, the focus of Lenz's law is about induced EMF, not induced current. Number two, Lenz's law is about the polarity of the EMF. It is not the direction of the induced current. Even though we often use the induced current to help us deduce the polarity of the EMF. Note that when we describe the direction of the EMF, we use words like direction, polarity. We do not say that EMF flow because it does not flow. It is not a current, but it can cause an induced current to flow. With this, we can now explain what it means when we say that the polarity of the EMF is such that it tries to oppose the change in the magnetic flux that causes it. To illustrate, we consider the case of a bar magnet that is moving towards a coil and use Lenz's law to explain the polarity of the EMF. Now, as the bar magnet moves near the coil, the coil experiences an increase in flux linkage. By Faraday's law, we know there will be an induced EMF that will cause a current in the coil. Let us now explain how to get the direction of this induced EMF and induced current. Lenz's law tells us that the induced EMF is such that it will try to set up an induced current to create a magnetic field to oppose this increasing flux linkage experienced by the coil. So what will it do? The induced EMF in the coil will try to set up a north pole at the side closer to the bar magnet and a south pole at the face further away. We see that the magnetic field induced by this north and south pole in the coil will be in this direction. Hence, using right-hand grip rule, we'll be able to get the direction of the induced current, which is like this. Note in this case, the induced magnetic field is in opposite direction to the external field created by the bar magnet. And the net effect is to reduce the increasing flux linkage that the coil is experiencing. Now let us try to explain the case where the bar magnet is now moved away from the coil. Pause the video now and first predict what will be the direction of the induced current in the coil then play the video to check your answer. In this case, as the bar magnet moves away from the coil, the coil experiences a decrease in flux linkage. By Lenz's law, there will be an induced EMF that sets up an induced current to oppose this decreasing magnetic flux linkage experienced by the coil. So how do we oppose this decreasing flux linkage? The induced EMF will now try to attract back the bar magnet to slow down the decrease in the flux linkage. To do so, it will now set up a south pole to try and attract the north pole back and a north pole in this direction. Hence, the magnetic field by the induced current in the coil is now from left to right. Using right-hand grip rule, we can deduce that the induced current is now in this direction. Note that the current direction is actually in opposite to what we have obtained before. Again in this case, we see that the induced magnetic field by the induced current 
is now in the same direction to the external field by the bar magnet as the coil is experiencing a decreasing flux linkage. Hence, the net effect of the two fields is to reduce the effect of this decreasing flux linkage. Let's try one more example of a coil moving through a region of uniform magnetic field. We can break the motion up into three parts. Number one, when the coil is going to enter into the field. Number two, when it is moving inside the field. And number three, when it is moving out of the field. Let us consider the case when it's moving into the field. As it enters into the field, we see that the coil experiences an increase in magnetic flux linkage. By Lenz's law, the polarity of the EMF will be such to set up a current to oppose this increase in flux linkage. Therefore, the magnetic field set up by the induced current should be in opposite direction to that of the external field and it will be pointing out of this plane. Using right-hand grip rule, we'll be able to tell that an anti-clockwise current will be induced in the coil. Some students may ask, we keep talking about the direction of the induced current. How do you describe the direction of the induced EMF in this case? In this case, we say that the direction or polarity of the EMF is such that it causes an anti-clockwise current in the coil. Now let's look at the second part when the coil is already moving inside the field. This one is quite easy to see. In this case, we see that the flux linkage of the coil remains constant. Hence, there's no EMF induced in the coil. Therefore, there's really no need to describe the polarity of the EMF. Let's consider the last case where the coil is moving out of the magnetic field. At the point when it is moving out, you can see that the magnetic flux linkage through the coil is decreasing. Hence, by Lenz's law, the induced EMF will produce a current to oppose this decrease in flux linkage. Therefore, the magnetic flux density produced by the induced current will be in the same direction as that of the external field. By right-hand grip rule, we see that the induced current will be in clockwise direction now. And we say that the polarity of the EMF is such that it causes a clockwise induced current in the coil. We like to end off this video lesson by addressing the negative sign we have seen in this equation, which we have conveniently called Faraday's law. However, we did note that Faraday's law only states that the induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage or rate of flux cut. Hence, only this portion of the equation is Faraday's law. The negative sign of this equation actually comes from Lenz's law. There is a negative sign because the direction of the EMF is always to oppose the change in the magnetic flux that causes it. If the rate of change of flux increases, then the EMF will try to reduce it. If the rate of change of flux decreases, the EMF will try to increase this decreasing flux.